I thought I was done with Petrot. Nope. All right, welcome back to the Lumios Post, where we talk about all things Pokemon, and today, well, if you didn't guess it by the colors and also what I just said, we're talking about Petrant. Specifically, the Pokemon Company just released a video about Petrant, um, and its kind of origin story, the true tale of what happened between it and Ogre Pond, and uh, even some story from before that. Really, really cool. Really happy they put this out. Really dumb they didn't put it in the game, but that's a whole nother thing for a whole nother time. Um, but yeah, this this gave us a lot of answers, but also did give us a lot of questions. We're going to talk about all of it, including what, you know, I think may be the most shocking discovery from Scarlet and Violet, and that is that Petrant might not be the bad guy here and may not even be the creator of the toxic chain. Let's get into it. Okay, so first off, we know that Petrant wasn't quite as evil as, uh, you know, we were initially led to believe when we played through the story of Teal Mask. You know, we heard that these Pokemon went to steal the masks and that's what kind of caused Ogre Pond's friend to die and what caused Ogre Pond to fight and kill the little three, all that stuff. And at first, it just kind of was phrased in a way where it just seemed like those Pokemon were like, oh, shiny masks, I want them. And that's only partially true. What really happened was Petrant uh, had an elderly couple that cared for it, and they really wanted the mask, so Petrant wanted to get it. So, you know, it was still wrong, absolutely. Like, murder is never okay, guys. You let that be the number one takeaway from this video. But... It wasn't like Petrant itself said, ooh, I want that mask, you know, it was, oh, you know, these people that I love want this mask, so I want to get it for them. Still wrong, but at least you can see some good in them, you know what I mean? We also learned, and this is just kind of interesting, I, I thought it was, uh, when I watched, or played through, rather, Teal Mask and watched the backstory of Ogre Pond and the Loyal Three, the true backstory to them, I kind of assumed that Ogre Pond had not met Petrant and that Ogre Pond thought it was just the little three, but Petrant was pulling the strings from behind the scenes and Ogre Pond didn't know about that. End up not being true. Ogre Pond faced and even tried to kill Petrant. It's also interesting to me that this short talks about how Petrant's mochi brings out the greed in people. And what's interesting to me about that is that is not what we witness in Mochi Mayhem. I don't see anybody being greedy and Mochi Mayhem. I see, uh, you know, just, just them doing the chicken dance and yelling, Mochi Mochi, you know, so uh, that's a little weird, but I imagine that a good way to explain that is all that time that Petrant was withdrawn into its shell, it's, it's kind of poison was getting concentrated, its power was getting concentrated, and it kind of got more control over the Mochi, you know, the Mochi always influenced people, but it, it now had the ability to just fully possess them under Petrant's control. Most interestingly, though, is that we learned that Petrant is from another region. It says that Petrant is from a faraway land, which this was kind of implied, but not explicitly stated in the story of Teal Mask, that Petrant and the Loyal Three were not from Kitakami, but now we, we do have the confirmation that they were not from Kitakami. They are from a faraway land. Now, based on what these Pokemon are pulling from, what story they're pulling from, which is the story of Momotaro, it is very likely that these Pokemon come from the Chugoku region. The Chugoku region is, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, I'm going to be naming a bunch of Japanese locations in this video. Hopefully I pronounced them right. I apologize if I get it off. I am not a fluent Japanese speaker. Uh, but yeah, so... The Chugoku region is, if we're looking at our world and saying that the Pokemon world's geography is at least similar to that, the Chugoku region would neighbor the Johto region. Uh, it would be on the opposite end of where Kanto is. So, like, you know, there's Kanto, Johto, Chugoku, right? Now, what's interesting about this is that we actually have never had a Chugoku mainline region. I do think that one of the Ranger games might have pulled from some of the Chugoku region, but the thing is, those are spinoffs that Pokemon hasn't touched with a 10-foot long pole in, what, like, 15 years plus? So, they can always just retcon that into a brand new region. They really don't have to keep that, and even still, I think that Ranger only pulled from a piece of that region, so, you know, you could say Petrant's from the other piece of that region. We also learned that it was here in this Chugoku-based region that Petrant tamed Okidogi, and that means that whatever Okidogi was before the Toxic Chain, uh, whether that's a new Pokemon or an old Pokemon, it 
lived here in the Chugoku region. You know, uh, since it neighbors Johto, perhaps there's some crossover in Pokemon. So thinking about old Pokemon, maybe it could have been a Snubble or Houndour or Smeargle. You know, those are the kind of dog Pokemon that come to mind. Also Growlithe, because that's, you know, from Kanto and that also lives in Johto. So it could live in Chugoku as well. But again, that's all speculative. Uh, it could just be a brand new Pokemon altogether. In fact, I'm kind of leaning that way, if I'm honest. Interestingly enough, though, we know that Petrarant and Okidogi encountered Monkey Dory and Pheasantipity on their travel. So Petrarant met Okidogi before he journeyed to Kitakami, went on this journey with Okidogi, and on the way to Kitakami was it that he encountered Pheasantipity and Monkey Dory. We also know, interestingly enough, that he crossed by sea. Now, if you're, again, looking at the real world to get from Chugoku to where Kitakami is based off of, uh, you actually don't have to cross the sea, you could cross land, but it is quicker to cross the sea, I imagine, uh, which means that we kind of know the route that Petrarant took, and I want to shout out Tsutami, Poke Tsutami, for this map uh, that was created. This was actually created for a hidden power video we did with Tsutami a while back, and uh, it's just a lovely map, and the colors are important. Uh, basically, anything that is colored on here is a Pokemon region. It is a region that has been represented by a mainline game, and anything that has not uh, been colored in, any of those like darker spots, those are uh, regions that have not been used by the Pokemon Company. So we know that Petrarant and Okidogi took a route similar to this one. Now, this means that they would have crossed through the Johto region, so they actually traveled through Johto, and then since they made their way through sea, it's very likely that they made their way up through Fukui and Ishikawa, crossing the sea at the tip of Ishikawa to get to Kitakami. We also know that Petrarant and Okidogi encountered Monkey Dory and Pheasantipity before they crossed the sea. So this means they encountered Pheasantipity and Monkey Dory either in the Chugoku region while they were still traveling through it, in the Johto region, or in Fukui or Ishikawa. So this means in order for the original forms of Pheasantipity and Monkey Dory pre-Toxic Chain to be a new Pokemon, it would have to either live in the Fukui or Ishikawa or Chugoku regions, uh, because those are not used by a mainline game, or would have to be a Pokemon that did live in Johto, but just has gone extinct since then, similar to like kind of how, uh, or, or not even extinct, but much smaller numbers, kind of like the Hisui Pokemon and Legends Arceus. They were much more prevalent in the days of Hisui, but you can't encounter them in Diamond and Pearl, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, or Platinum. But the thing that I found most interesting was Petrarant's encounter with Monkey Dory and Pheasantipity. It says that Petrarant, you know, encountered Monkey Dory and saw that it could see the future, and it thought that this would be a valuable power to have, and took Monkey Dory onto his team. And then a similar thing said with Pheasantipity, it had these pheromones that it could expel, and, uh, Petrarant saw that as valuable, and so it kind of added Pheasantipity to the team. Now, what I think is interesting about this is that it implies that Monkey Dory already had its psychic powers before Petrarant met it, and Pheasantipity already had its, you know, mystical fairy powers before Petrarant met it. Now, this is a little different from what we hear in Kitakami and what's implied in Kitakami and the Teal Mask. We uh, learned that at one point, Monkey Dory was really foolish, Okidogi was really weak, and Pheasantipity was very ugly, and these Pokemon wished to become smart, strong, and beautiful, respectively, and the Toxic Chain made them that way. So, you know, it's led people to believe, okay, well, Petrarant gave them the Toxic Chain, and it granted them this power, and then also kind of gave Petrarant some control over these Pokemon. But, again, we know that Petrarant's powers here only expel greed in the Pokemon. They, it only increases their greed. It does not yet have the ability to control these Pokemon. And then also, again, when Petrarant encounters Monkey Dory, it already has these psychic powers that were awakened by the Toxic Chain. Which means, here it comes, the Toxic Chain is not from Petrarant. And the thing to remember, too, is that Kitakami lore is straight up wrong, like we learned that in-game, right? Ogre Pond was the bad guy. No, turns out Ogre Pond was, one, not a guy, and two, was actually not bad at all. It was, you know, I mean, murder, again, is never okay, but she was just kind of standing up for her friend. She was angry because they killed her friend, and she actually was, like, disowned by the village, and, you know, it's just this whole sad thing, you know? So, Ogre Pond is not evil and the village thought it was so just want to get that out there 
Kitakami lore is straight up false. Now, what this would imply is that if the toxic chain is not coming from Petrant, then this would imply that Pheasantipity and Monkey Dory were encountered by Petrant and Okidogi while they were still traveling through Chugoku. Now, this means that also Okidogi was likely uh, already corrupted by the toxic chain before meeting Petra. And it also means that, yes, there is another Pokemon, another entity that is giving out the toxic chain to things. And more interestingly, it actually also means that Petra itself, since it's not the creator of the toxic chain, was corrupted by the toxic chain. Now, we're kind of led to believe that Petra is the creator of the toxic chain because it even has a signature move called Malignant Chain. So, you know, it, it's based in chains. But let's not forget that Okidoki also uses his chain to attack. Just because they acquired this item doesn't mean that they created it, right? We know Okidoki didn't create the toxic chain. And all three of the loyal three have the ability toxic chain. So they all are utilizing that toxic chain. It doesn't mean that they created it. So I would say the same thing's true with Petrai. Yes, its signature move uses the chain. But no, that doesn't mean that it created the toxic chain. Now, what this means is Petrant being corrupted. This actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it because uh, we know that the Loyal Three, again, they would have been corrupted because of a desire of theirs. Pheasantipity wanted to be beautiful. Monkey Dory wanted to be wise. Okidogi wanted to be strong. Petrant wanted to be loved. And just as the Toxic Chain granted the wishes of Pheasantipity, Monkey Dory, and Okidogi, it did grant the wishes of Petrant as well. It allowed Petrant to produce something that would create greed in people, and that greed would then allow Petrant to just kind of very easily buy love. You know, it could buy love instead of, you know, doing the thing you're supposed to do with love, and that is let it come naturally. Now, so that leaves the question of, well, what was Petrant initially? And we actually, oddly enough, have more answers to this than we do the, what the Loyal Three was initially. So Petrant, we know that it's kind of tied to this mythical Pecha Berry that seemingly grows in Chugoku. And uh, the Pokemon's equivalent of Chugoku, I should say. So very likely this Pokemon was tied to it. I imagine that because this Pecha Berry is so special and it would be tied to this Pokemon. I imagine this Pokemon would be like a grass type or a fairy type, maybe even a grass fairy type, and also was probably a mythical Pokemon as well. But more importantly, this means that there is a like straight up evil Pokemon living in the Chugoku region, handing out toxic chains to people. I, I guess it could be an item or like a location that corrupts Pokemon, but I am kind of more so imagining that it is a Pokemon, you know, it is some kind of entity, and I imagine it's a legendary Pokemon or a mythical Pokemon. And this also kind of means that Chugoku in Pokemon is a scary place to be. You know, there there is the fact that in Chugoku, there's this plague, this famine that's corrupting Pokemon. And that's what I imagine it's based off of, is like a plague or a famine. You also, I don't think Pokemon would ever go here, uh, but there is the fact that Hiroshima, uh, that was, that's in the Chugoku region. So there is a small chance that this could be some kind of tie into nuclear radiation, but let's go ahead and just dismiss that thought. I wanted to get out there because it sounds intelligent, but to be frank with you, there is no way they will ever reference that in a Pokemon game because that was a very big tragedy. So definitely not touching that with a 10 foot pole. And that's also probably why at the end of the day, Pokemon chose to kind of make this the Chugoku region is very likely we will never visit the Chugoku region because that is the location of Hiroshima. And that's just not something that the Pokemon company is going to want to touch with a 10 foot pole. That is no, nah, they're going to want to stay far away from that, understandably so. So, you know, you just kind of make vague references to it. Uh, our next region would probably be this little dark gray area here, like the Kitakami, I imagine, is a part of. But yeah, I, I just wanted to get that out there that I don't think Petra is the creator of the Toxic Chain. I think there's someone or something else that is corrupting Pokemon with this chain that is down there in the Chugoku region. Will we ever see it? Very likely not. But it, to me, all the evidence stacks up that no, Petra didn't create this chain. Sorry. But yeah, be sure to let me know what you think of this theory. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss all of our future videos. And until next time, I will see all of you later.